I'm standing on an ice road in the coastal region of northern Sweden, where we find a rivalry that is impacting the future of sustainable energy consumption. The rivalry exists between this town, Lulia, and another one up this river toward the mountains about 50 kilometers. It's a slightly smaller town, but feisty, and it's called Boden. Boden and Lulia are so competitive they couldn't even agree on a location for their regional hospital, so they ended up picking a site halfway between them. I can't even imagine the energy when these two meet for a football match. So that's a bit about the rivalry. This region is also known for other things. This area is the perfect place to make green steel. There are two primary ingredients for making green steel, iron ore and renewable electricity. The iron ore is located about two to 300 kilometers north of here in four iron ore mines. The other main ingredient is electricity and right here Along the Lule River Basin, we have more than six hydroelectric plants. So the stage is set. We have the big ingredients of iron ore and electricity, and we have a rivalry between two towns that forms the hotbed for innovation. Let's start here in Lulia. On the edge of the bay over there, about one kilometer toward the coast, is a research facility that's been built by Hybrid. Hybrid is a joint venture between three Swedish icons. First, LKAB, who's a mining company known for an iron ore production, with its headquarters right here in Lulia. Second is Vattenfall, an international electric utility headquartered in Stockholm. And the third is SSAB, an international steel producer also based in Sweden. Incidentally, the hybrid research facility over there is right next to the SSAB offices. With these three heavyweights at the table, Hybrid has some lofty goals to be producing fossil-free steel for the market by 2026. Let's take a look at how they plan to do this. We always start the journey of making steel with iron ore. In this case, it's sourced from one of the mines I mentioned earlier, about two to 300 kilometers that way. Probably one that's operated by LKAB. From the mine, it's transported to a town called Yalavare, about 200 kilometers that way. The iron ore is heated and processed and formed into iron pellets. LKAB, who operates this plant, has converted this pellet plant to use bio oil. In future, they may convert this process to electric or hydrogen, but in these initial stages, they're using bio oil. Now near the pellet plant, Hybrid is planning a direct reduction plant that puts the iron ore pellets through a reduction process in a very heat intensive process that results in sponge iron. This heating process requires so much intensity that they've decided to leverage green hydrogen combustion to generate the heat. The hydrogen is produced with renewable electricity, probably from one of the Vattenfall hydropower stations nearby. Electricity and water come together in electrolysis to produce the green hydrogen. And from the electrolysis, they store the hydrogen in a massive underground storage tank and then it's pulled from this tank as required for the massive furnaces. Now out of the furnace comes the sponge iron that looks sort of like these briquettes in this picture. For the last step, the sponge iron is transported down to a port here and loaded onto a ship that takes it to a place near Stockholm, which I can't pronounce. It's about a thousand kilometers that way. That's where the sponge iron will go through a steel mill and get turned into slabs of steel that can be sold into a wide variety of manufacturing plants around the world. The steel making process actually requires another heating process. That's three heating processes, the pellet plant, the sponge iron plant, and now the steel plant. The optimal green heating process in this case is an electric arc furnace. Again, powered by renewable electricity from the Vattenfall electric system. 
The steel plant is operated by SSAB, the final partner in the hybrid joint venture. In the end, it's LKAB for mining and the iron ore processing, Vattenfall for the renewable electricity, and SSAB for the steel production. All three make up hybrid here in Lulia. As a team, they plan to have green steel ready for market in 2026. Wow, that's an impressive green steel plan from Lulia. So what is Budden up to that could possibly rival that? Well, there's a company in Stockholm called H2 Green Steel that plans to make Budden the hub of its green steel operation. Their centerpiece is a massive hydrogen electrolyzer that will feed an integrated iron and steel plant in Budden as early as 2025. They expect to scale up their electrolyzer to make enough hydrogen for 5 million tons of high quality steel production by 2030. Okay, that's impressive too. It looks like this rivalry is alive and well between Lulea and Boden, far beyond the tussle about where to locate a regional hospital. The impressive thing is that this neighborly competition could be a central contributor to making steel a sustainable product. Today, steel production accounts for 7 to 9 percent of the world's greenhouse emissions. With green steel production, we could see that drop to zero. What do you think? I'm kind of excited about that possibility. And I want to leave you with a few things to think about. First, I am curious how both of these projects are being affected by the current energy crisis. Although we are seeing an increase in renewables investment, having that energy diverted into steel production at a high cost may not be feasible right now. Second, Cisco Systems is actively engaged in providing digital infrastructure and in industrial projects, and the green steel industry is no exception. If you would like to know more about that, please reach out to your Cisco contacts for more information, or message me directly. Take care.